They're still plugging and playing, despite my regular requests to stop. The 100 level, starring that same kid from the Bomberman clone and the rock puzzle game among several others. Jump up 100 floors with a series of platforms, conveyor belts, and spiked platforms without running out of lives. You do this across four leaves, and if it looks like I'm doing pretty well, that's because I learned quickly to slam down the buttons for moving and jumping as hard as possible. On my first try I ran out of lives halfway through leave one, because this game loves to eat jump and movement inputs and movement has a weird delay to it most of the time. Though even with that problem, and an annoyingly long stun animation when hit by anything, my controller hostile strategy led to finishing the game in less than 15 minutes. The Tarot Maze. So is this a maze made out of cards that try to tell your future, or... It's an RPG. And it's starring that same kid from before, but he's wearing armor this time. No, 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 let's not gloss over that. There's an RPG on this console. Now of all the game genres you can think of, the ones that require the least amount of time and effort to make, RPGs? Not high on that list. So either someone put some modicum of effort into this, or it's going to fall apart really quickly. Go rescue a princess by getting some magic thing from the seventh floor. There is combat in this game, but it's entirely math-based. You run into an enemy, and the damage you take every turn is the enemy's attack rating minus your defense, and vice versa for the damage they take. You have zero input on how each fight goes. You have to collect a bunch of color-coded keys to get through each door, various items to boost your defense and attack, and... chug vials of blood to regain health? Am I playing as Kid Dracula? Experience and gold buy stat boosts and health from random vendors who look like the guy from the Qbert clone earlier. But you have to be careful about how everything gets spent. See, the game won't let you fight enemies that would kill you. So if you run out of experience and gold and have a monster blocking your path which you aren't strong enough to fight, congratulations! Your game is unwinnable. There's no save feature either, so if this happens at any point, including right before the seventh floor, you have to start over. Tales of Treasures. I won't go over all 14 pages of instructions for this game, so here's the gist of it. Mine all the gold, then go through the door which magically appears somewhere. Using and collecting items to solve puzzles is assigned to the same button with a directional input. Man, if only this controller had two other buttons to assign one of those functions to. The game's biggest problem is that the levels are just annoying to figure out. Not knowing where the door appears usually means getting stuck in an unwinnable situation after collecting all the gold and having to start over repeatedly. Doesn't matter though, the level select screen is completely broken. You can skip right to the final stage of the game and wait, is that a Dragon Quest slime? Table Hockey. I'll give it this much, it's realistic. Most of the goals I scored were own goals by the CPU, and most of the goals the CPU scored were own goals by me. I swear though that on some of these goals the puck just went right through my paddle. Yep. The AI doesn't actually try to score. It will just hit the puck straight forward if you leave it to its own devices. The CPU doesn't try to win games so much as not lose them. Sword Soul. Nah, this intro track is all wrong. Let me fix that. A tale of souls and swords, eternally retold. Play as one of five characters recycled from previous games. The stats, if you can read them, don't mean anything, as long as you spend forward and remember to defend automatically when you are offended. Face all the other characters, and a clone of yourself at the... Uh, is her palette swap the Wii Fit Trainer? Aside from the game being slow, and occasionally eating inputs, some controls are just awkward. Like mashing all the buttons on the D-pad and A to do a... unique skill. The AI is so well put together that it can be cheesed to death in two different ways. Projectile spamming, and jump attack spamming. Both work just as well. 
Submarine battle. Drop missiles on subs until the game tells you to stop. Even with a few bombs to clear the screen, eventually there are just so many subs attacking you, it's way too hard to prevent your big, slow battleship from taking hits. It's also difficult to aim as there's no frame of reference on the ship for where the missile will drop from. You only have three lives to get through 15 stages of this, and those 15 stages are all... the same. Just with a higher score to hit. If you run out, it's game over, oh excuse me, gamai over, and you go all the way back to the start. Special Mission. Tell me from this intro what you think the game will be like. On second thought, don't. It's Contra. The gameplay is Contra, the player character is from Contra, the lives are from Contra, even the levels themselves are from Contra. This sound effect, though, is from Star Fox 64. They couldn't do the levels where you run away from the screen, though, so instead, they're elevator sections. And the same wall turrets boss gets recycled multiple times. Hey, remember the alien boss from level 3? What does it look like in this? <laughs> space War. What unique and innovative it's Space Invaders. Space Invaders with a couple sentences of plot, which somehow got through Google Translate almost unscathed. Most power-ups are self-explanatory, but why is the boulder power-up shaped like a paintbrush? I guess if you like Space Invaders you might be able to tolerate this, but it's actually a lot slower than the original arcade version from 1978. I was falling asleep at the wheel. Or the control wheel. Or control stick. Or whatever's in the cockpits of these ships. Sleepwalking. It's a puzzle game where you try to get a late night snack as fast as possible. The doors swing according to the directions marked on the ground, and only when you move a certain direction past them. Later stages add in floor switches, which also require moving a certain way to activate them. Like Space War, I simply got bored way too fast to begin to care about this. I resorted to trying to wake this guy up by having him tumble into the abyss. Running is YOU AGAIN! Avoid getting caught for a set amount of time by holding right and pressing jump now and then. I don't know what throws me off more, the square fruit in the background, or that you get the wolf to back off by lobbing grenades at him. Aside from it being rather slow for a game called Running, ledge detection is a bit off, so you'll have plenty of chances to appreciate the game over music. Raindrop Adventure You know how Space War was Space Invaders but a lot slower? Welcome to Load Runner, but a lot slower. Grab all the raindrops and get to the exit while avoiding enemies, usually by opening holes in the ground. I'm long past the point where all I can really say is it's a worse version of another game. And there are still over 100 games left. So this is what purgatory looks like. What in bootleg hell is a rabbit slipe? Oh, rabbit slide! Think Super Monkey Ball, but with a rabbit and no fun. You have five lives to get through ten stages, collecting a set number of golden jugs and hitting an exit arrow. All the while, you have to listen to the sound of dripping water as you move. The game is both way too easy and way too annoying. It's hard to fall off most paths because the rabbit never moves all that fast, but there are tons of split paths and teleporters beyond the first couple stages, which are there specifically to waste your time. You can't tell which path goes where until it's already too late and get forced to backtrack several times. Then the game throws in jumps! I have a better time understanding Mandarin Chinese than I do how momentum works in this game because sometimes the rabbit just stops in midair and falls off the stage, and sometimes he keeps all his speed and flies way too far, and sometimes I would land it and not know what I did right to avoid dying. This asshole again? I thought we were done with this kid! Perfect Thief has you run through a room full of spiked balls and monsters, grab a trophy, and finish getting to the other side. Despite the help screen saying I could move only up or up and left, you can, in fact, move in eight directions. Slowly, but you can move in eight directions. 
There's horrendous lag on the controls. Turns don't register fast enough when you need to make precise jumps, though that assumes that the jumps work at all. You're supposed to double tap A to do a longer double somersault jump, but hitting A once frequently registers as hitting it twice. Add in that the difficulty ramps up way too fast, and this game is an absolute mess. It's to the point that the AI in the demo video can't get past the first jump of level 4. Overspeed Racing It combines the look of a low-rent PlayStation game with the sound of a low-rent NES game. Also, the turning sound is the same as the one in RC Pro-Am. Like the other racing game, you're supposed to slam into tanker trucks to refill your fuel. Oh, did I say fuel? I meant the timer. Unless this happens to be a car which uses fuel by the second, even when it's not moving. And its gas tank loses gallons of fuel when it hits anything. Also, treasure chests refill your fuel. Can you just dump anything into this car's gas tank like Mr. Fusion and it'll run? This would be tolerable if not for the semis. They always try to block you, and more often than not, you'll waste more fuel trying to slow down and get around them than by just ramming them off the road. I'm just kidding, it would suck regardless. I would never want to drive through this dystopian nightmare world where the streets are littered with trash cans and boulders, and I have to knock off gas trucks to survive- Holy shit, this is a Mad Max game. At least there were only three tracks, so this was over in less than ten minutes. Stop using this kid, I am so sick of seeing him. Ninja he- oh, um, excuse me. Ninja Hero is the same assets from that ninja rail shooter used to make a side-scrolling beat-em-up. Holy shit, this game drops inputs like Corey Coleman drops passes. It doesn't help you have to double tap up or down to do special attacks or the screen nuking special, but even things like jumping attacks only seem to work half the time. Just to add insult to injury, if you fall off a platform at any height, even if the ground is just a couple feet below you, it's an instant death. The only positive here is that bosses can easily get corner spam. I know that's not a positive in most cases, but for this game, I will take whatever I can get. I know how this is going to sound, given everything we've seen to this point, but... <sighs> These games are about to get a lot worse. Step aside, track and field, it's time for 110 hurdles! I assume there's supposed to be a meter somewhere in the title. Anyone who complains about rubber banding in games like Mario Kart needs to play this. I lost a race with a time of about 13 seconds, and won the next race with a time of over 15 seconds. Every other game on this console is a WXN file. In layman's terms, they're NES ROMs. Because they're actually running on a cheap emulator, these games have three save and load states, which get wiped out once you exit the game. The controls for each title usually aren't explained, and some are so low quality they look more like Atari 5200 ROMs. And yes, that is how they fit the rest of the games on the micro SD card. <laughs> Tell what's left of your eardrums, I said, you're welcome. The sound is so poorly programmed in 2D Escape, it keeps scrambling whenever a sound effect plays. on the grid without getting hit by the missiles, while destroying all of them. You do this by getting them to run into each other or... Targets? Crosshairs? Water valves? What are these? Well, I know what they and this game aren't. Fun. I could do the eardrums joke for every game left on this thing and it would still work. Access Block is Bejeweled, or any other matching puzzle game, if it had controls that frequently don't select blocks when you click on them. You need 200 points to pass level 1. No thanks. Add em Up is a number puzzle in which you add up surrounding numbers to equal the number in the drop tile. Except when you don't, and it works anyway. Look, I like math. Alright, I was in advanced placement courses for it in middle and high school, 
and I like the occasional number puzzle in a game. But a game that is nothing but math puzzles that isn't number munchers or math blaster? Get that weak shit out of here! Ether Fighter, or if Missile Command were both more advanced and not fun. You move a turret along the bottom of the screen and shoot down incoming ships. If too much shit is on the screen, the game lags and the music stutters. This somehow feels even slower than it looks. There's a gate to help block enemies flying down, but it doesn't cover the far sides or middle of the screen. Also, you don't get points for anything that crashes into it. I could only take about four minutes of this one, but I can say for sure that there are at least three stages to this game. Three agonizing stages. Air... I... all hero? Kill me now. I need to get used to not having a damn clue how to play these games, because from here on, it's a total crapshoot. Your crosshairs are also your ship. I guess. Because moving those away from the shots avoids them, even if they're at the center of the screen. You need to do this because for the entire game, you only have two hit points. The firing delay is massive, which only draws out each stage further as you try to spray and pray your way through all these terribly animated ships. There are six stages, the second of which is stage one somehow, and each has the same backdrop and terrain. Just awful. Alien is... is what, a movie by Ridley Scott? You pilot a boat in the water, and on land, and try to fight off invading ships. Each ship type has a certain amount of hit points and firepower, with the bigger ones able to fire faster, and certain power-ups upgrade your ship. Hit detection is terrible, and shots only seem to register consistently from the front. Side shots have about a 50-50 chance of not harmlessly passing through enemies. If an enemy reaches your base, which is what I'm assuming the patch of land at the bottom is, it's game over. Except for when they get nowhere near it, and you still game over. I don't know. Archer. It's the boring, easy version of Space Invaders. You're supposed to move around and hit all the birds, but I got through all nine levels in under five minutes by standing still and holding fire. Can we even call this guy an archer? He's just throwing the arrows, not shooting them. Archery. Try to beat the... The hello score? By firing at a moving target. This one actually has a bit of thought put into it, as you need to fire at a certain angle to hit the center of the target. The wind strength and direction is mostly random, and you have to account for both when timing shots. The catch is there is nothing to do beyond playing one round. One minute later, you've seen everything archery has to offer, and either mourned your loss, or don't give a shit. It's not pronounced how you think it is. Move Prospector Man around the map and hit as many open spaces as possible without going back over the same tiles. The score you need to get for each level is hidden, but it doesn't matter because the game is way too easy. You can use three pickaxes to destroy rocks in the way, so it's hard not to succeed in this. I got through all nine stages in under four minutes, at which point the music froze when it kicked back to the title screen. Attacking. Scroll around a town like an idiot looking for four or five tiny helicopters to shoot down, at which point you're sent back to the title screen. When you hit any direction on the D-pad, the game never stops scrolling, which makes aiming unnecessarily hard. I wouldn't doubt that this could make people motion sick, or at least hurt their eyes with how bad the sides of the screen look when scrolling over any part of the map. The never-ending 8-bit growl ensures nothing in this game looks or sounds good. It's actually a backstroke swimming game, but I guess this file had a four-character limit for its title. Mash A and B for a solid minute, win the race, that's the whole game. God damn it, EA, what won't you put your games on? Okay, it's not that battlefield. This is a weird mix of Pac-Man and combat, you move around and shoot things, assuming the fire button actually responds, 
but you can't shoot things without picking up the star. Getting shot by enemies kills you, but getting touched by them freezes you for an unnecessarily long time. I have no idea if there are even levels in this game. After a while, robot teddy bear things appeared, and that was the closest thing I saw to progression. Blackjack is exactly what... <gasps> it's Blackjack, but with bad music and bad fan art of a card dealer. It works, I guess? Well, the music doesn't work, it stops playing entirely after a couple minutes. I'd argue the silence is better, though. And lastly for this video, Blob Man. More like Flask Man, because the whole point of this is to collect a certain color of sludge at each stage. Getting the wrong color depletes the meter or outright kills you. I suppose the game is functional, but holy shit is this boring. Drops eventually fall faster, but even then there are long stretches of time where the right color doesn't drop. So you're standing still between the pipes just waiting for it to fall. When it does drop more than once, if they're more than one pipe apart, you're usually too slow to catch both, dragging each level out even further. And before I drag this video out even further, I'm going to take a break and play something better. Like Shaq Fu.